Today, gentlemen, I've been honored to coach you. It's more honored to take you into the field of battle. But there's another honor that's been bestowed upon you. And that is the mantle that comes with that question. Who am I? I am a champion! Welcome back guys, definitely appreciate the support. This video, I just wanna make a quick video in regards to what Nick Saban declares as the best football, the best defense in football. Uh, so out of 4 2 0 3 one he believes cover one man is the best defense in football. So um, it's kinda interesting. I watched a seminar on him like last year and uh, after listening to him, obviously, uh, you know, I tend to agree. Um, so I want to go into cover one man. Now, obviously, you got to have talent at the defensive back position, okay? And if you don't have talent, you know, you're hoping that the offense has a lack of talent or maybe, you know, your average talent is still better than theirs. Well, let's just get right into it. Um, so obviously, we're in cover one man here. I'm showing this on a practice field, man to man, man to man, okay? Now, I used to think this as well, what I'm about to show you, and I'm pretty sure... A lot of people out there believe the same thing is that if I were to ask you where is this corner's help in cover one man you would say inside right because you have the whole player and you have the deep middle safety player and this is what you know I learned from Nick Saban and I thought it was just uh, incredible insight and knowing this you can make these minor adjustments to your cover one man and play it a lot better okay and I'm gonna show you game footage of me doing it as well so let's go over to this guy over here and let's say I know I'm in cover one man and what most people believe, believe and what I used to believe is that my help is to the inside. So I should look more to play outside leverage. Now at the snap of the ball, he does scoop inside. So I wonder if Madden code, uh, coded it this way, you know, to make it better. Okay. But still, let's imagine we want to play outside leverage because we have help inside, right? All right, so at the snap of the ball, ball's out, and he threw it late too, right? But you see that there's no one there to, to kind of save you on that inside ball right there, the inside slant. So let me I think I showed another one where we kind of throw on time because the quarterback kind of threw a little late. Definitely late. The ball should be already gone, right? But you see all this space inside. So obviously the safety can't help you. And our whole player is not that much of a factor, right? And this is what Nick Saban alluded to. Um, you know, he was in the days talking about, you know, Jerry Rice would just torch teams playing cover one with the post route, a skinny post, right? And you think, well, how is that possible? You know, there's help to the inside, right? So I wonder if I did something here. Okay, no. So I just wanted to showcase slants on both sides, throwing it more in time. And as you see, it's just a completion. Okay. Do it again. Throw it to the opposite side. You see where the middle player inside. And here's the thing. I think Madden has the field proportions wrong as well. So in real life, it's even worse. What do I mean by field proportions? Proportionate to the size of the players. I think the field is supposed to be more like out this way. If you don't know what I mean, go watch my uh, video on uh, what video was that? where I went over, you know, um, the Bills and Rams game on uh, the opening night. And um, I noticed something that looked like Madden is just out of whack when it comes to proportions. So just imagine, imagine the field being that wide as well. So these guys will probably be out a little bit further. Okay. But I'll go ahead and play it. So here, okay, yeah. So here I did outside leverage. So I went on the defense and I did outside leverage, right? Outside leverage assignment. And even the computer threw in rhythm almost like before he even broke. Yeah, right? And we're playing outside leverage. You see we're outside leverage here. We're doing this because we have inside help, right? So play it real quick. And again, look at all this space inside for this receiver to attack. There is no help inside. Okay. So basically, what Nick Saban was getting at is 
he has divider lines on the field. Obviously, these are imaginary. You don't see them on the field. Um, I believe he draws it right outside the numbers here. Okay. And in retrospect, when you think about it, I mean, there's far more space to the inside of this receiver and corner as opposed to the outside. You see how much space is available out here for this receiver to attack? So it makes no sense for you to align outside and just, you know, naturally kind of give away this much inside. This safety will never be able to make it on a on-time throw to the inside to this receiver. Same with over here, right? And then your whole player is the same deal. I mean, he's going to have to travel. There's just too much space for him to travel for a ball, as we see, as we saw, like on a slant or a deep dig pattern. And that's not to say that the whole player in Madden plays right. But, you know, in real life, it's still, that's just far too much space to travel. So in relation to this imaginary divider line, that should dictate how you leverage the receiver that you're playing if you are outside of the divider line then you play with inside leverage not outside because your help is not to the inside they're they're never going to be able to make it on those type of throws inside your help is the sideline this is where your help is so he's still playing to his help it's just that people think that their help is to the inside when you're outside of this line here and it's just not true okay same with this player your help is the sideline so play to your help you play inside leverage now, obviously, I, I believe they play inside upfield shoulder. Um, I got to go back and watch the clip. Now, inside, if you're inside leverage, yeah, now these players can help out, you know, that whole player, the deep middle safety. There's less room for them to travel on, on balls thrown to the inside to these players, right? So if you are inside the divider line, then yeah, now you play with outside leverage. And I believe if they travel on like a slant, Nick Saban... I think he was saying underneath trail i don't remember the 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 actual technique that they're supposed to play with but i know inside the divider line outside leverage if you're outside the divider line you play inside leverage and i just thought that something that small in detail was so amazing to me and he also said he noted it's not static right so let's draw this line here and what he was saying was let's say this receiver originally lines up here in a corner because he's outside the divider line, aligns inside, right? If this receiver off the ball comes inside and then travels up, well then, you know, your leverage, obviously as he's traveling up and you're playing inside leverage and then when he, go, he crosses that divider line, then your leverage should change, right? Because everything's relative to the play. I, you know, I, I thought that that was kind of important as well. Now, obviously, they're not probably going to do that in Madden as they cross the divider line, you know, knowing that, hey, I should play with more outside leverage because now my help is to the inside at this point in the route, right? So I think that's what he was speaking of when he was saying that Jerry Rice would just destroy guys on skinny posts, right? So even if a guy got it right, okay, inside leverage because he's outside, Jerry Rice... And then maybe he snap of the ball gets inside, right? And maybe they still want to play with inside leverage, right? Well, then that would be a problem here, right? So it made sense, you know, relative to where you are during the play. But pre-snap where they are, you know, you should... What I do is I... Why don't I just go right to the footage? I believe I had some here. Okay, yeah, so here I wanted to showcase where I do. So I pre-snap, I put him inside, inside with the adjustments. And you'll see how a lot tighter he plays on that dig pattern that was just wide open, right? So let's go ahead and play this. Inside leverage, steps inside a little bit better. And it's just a lot more tighter to this particular route. As we see. So... Now, just because you align them inside, it doesn't mean that they won't get beat inside because these receivers have jobs too, right? I mean, those guys are good as well. It's just that you should play, they should play their, their assignment a lot better, right? Because they're playing to their help, which is the sideline. So here I am in game. 
So when I get a formation like this, where's the, the divider line? About here. Now, if we do this in proportions, because I think the numbers where they are is wrong in the game, I think it should be a little bit further out with the field being wider as well. So, you know, maybe I'll do some things and see, you know, maybe the divider line should be more out here, right? So I, I don't know, I, you know, I'm still tinkering with it, but right away, with just this as the standard, everyone's inside. So when I play Carbon One Man against something like this with the bunch set, I make the adjustment for them to all play outside, right? And that's an easy adjustment. And I use her the deep middle safety. A lot of people use the, the three receiver hook or the robber. Um, you might, you'll see in some of these clips, it might be more beneficial for you to play the safety. You can do some very unique stuff with this stuff. Okay. Now you notice they, they play at different levels on the defense. Go check out this guy's name is the Sim Experiment. Um, he has a channel on YouTube and he went over this. I think he found this in the game, which was very interesting. It's called Lock and Levels. The reason why they play at these different depths at corner, because quite naturally, if you guys were all on the same level, uh, a lot of rub and pick action can happen. Somebody can get lost in the muck and someone can bust wide open, right? It's one of the ways you can attack man coverage is, is with rub and pick routes. So they align this way to alleviate that problem. So go check out the Sim Experiment. Um, very knowledgeable. Uh, knows a lot about football. I would definitely check him out. Him, there's other, there's other guys too. NYKia31. Uh, there's a guy named Geronimo22, I think it is. Um, he used to coach in the NFL, right? So if you want to know defense, that guy knows what he's talking about, right? So anyways, I'm just giving a shout out to those guys. I got a lot of good stuff. There's other channels as well, but you know, I'm not going to go over that right now. But anyways, outside leverage on this, all this stuff. Let's see how it, it works out. And because I know that I had these guys playing outside leverage, you know, obviously I want to help on the inside as a deep middle safety. Now I think the play, I think he ends up throwing underneath on a screen, but you know, I still want to showcase. Okay, so he hot routes him out. And now because he's outside of the divider line, then I readjust this player to play inside leverage. Now think about this for a second. So as the safety, to me, that's less ground for me to cover, right? Uh, because I'm only dealing with inside of here, inside the divider line. So when you think of it this way, I don't care what this guy is doing, really, right? So now I'm really only helping out these players, and I know they should be playing outside leverage. So I'm a lot more muggier on these routes, not so this route out here, okay? So you'll play a lot better at safety just knowing this stuff as as opposed to you playing deep middle safety and you're so afraid of the deep you know fly and now you're flying over there and then someone's wide open on a crossing pattern or, or something of that neighbor of that of that nature okay so let me snap the ball okay so best defense in football cover one man right um on a screen this guy's eyeing down his man and he jumps around which is uh beautiful stuff but Let's go back and take a look at the routes on the back side. Well, on the front side, really. Or the strong side of the passing strafe, I should say. And look. Look how you see he's taking an outside route, but he's outside leverage on that, right? I mean, that's just not even open at all, right? Look at this player. Outside leverage, right? So where can you throw the ball on this route? Well, only to the inside, but that's where I am, right? Now this player out here, we're not worried about him. He's not even involved with us because he's outside of the divider line and our player is playing inside leverage because his help is to the sideline. So looking up the field, I mean, that's not there. Let's just say this was a regular, you know, route play without the screen. That's not there. I mean, you would have to throw an outside. You would have to throw like a you know, deadly accurate outside shoulder ball on that, right? And this isn't there based upon the help. Now this player, I don't know what he's doing, but he's crossing. But again, that's what a whole player is for, right? So little little things like that, just the leverage deal can change your cover one defense all the way. Okay, I think I have a couple of more examples. So cover one man. So 
again. So this guy should play with inside leverage, inside leverage. And when it's on the cusp like this, it depends on in-game dynamics for me. So I wonder what I did. So I did outside leverage. So when I do that, I know me as a safety that kind of dictates more ground I have to cover. Right? Oh, so I see why I did this. Because I don't care about this guy. Right? If I have him inside leverage, I expect you to do a pretty damn de decent job on inside breaking routes, right? So I really don't even worry about him. So this kind of cuts it off. That's why I did this. To where I'm just... It's almost like a, a two-man deal, right? Where you guys are defending these two guys and I'm taking whatever's happening over the top of you guys. More so inside, though. Because they don't play underneath trail technique. So, I mean, you can play with guys like this. You can pre-snap. I haven't even gotten into, like... You know deeper things you can do because I haven't been running it long enough I've been I'm a split field guy but I'm gonna start incorporating this more so into my defense to add another wrinkle well you could play I'm, I'm just thinking now you can align over here as the deep middle safety do some Ed Reed stuff right he'll go through his adjustments and all that crap I mean you'll have your alignments already ready and then you know Right before the snap of the ball, you just start flying over here because you already know you're just topping these guys more so inside. Him I don't care about, and him I don't care about. So I'm more so worried about that. Just something little as that, you take down the fact of thinking that you had the whole field to cover as deep middle safety, and you shouldn't be thinking that at all anyways. Should be more inside the numbers, right? But you shrink it down more so to just these guys over here, right? So let's see what happens. Okay, and I press that guy. There's other things you can do, right? So now you're pressing and you're playing traditional stuff, right? I'm not going to go over why I did that. Okay, yeah, I finally got him inside. So one thing you can do is you can make the adjustment to where everybody goes inside. And then you manually do the ind individual adjustment where you get these guys outside. See, I mean, that little adjustment right there, it changes it a bit. So I don't know why I didn't, but I think it would have made more sense to realign him back inside because he crossed the divider line, right? And now I don't care about these guys really at all, right? And we could just double this guy pretty much. Or because I'm not worried about this side of the field really at all based upon the formation, I can still keep him outside and him outside and now my assignment I'm not working inside the numbers because I'm not worried about anything over here my assignment can be more so something like this right I've sh shrunk my responsibility based upon their formation and our alignments right and look how everything's just bagged up let's go back and see the routes so what was he running? Okay, crossover. Looks like a wheel, yeah, switch deal over there. Okay. So inside. 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 Okay. So he's outside leverage. So he, he should be pretty decent on this route. This Man, this is crazy. I'm looking at, at this. So I should have had him inside. I should have just went with stick with the boundary line rule, the divider line rule. Because with him being inside leverage, you know, I like inside leverage better on that, right? Just stay upfield shoulder. But that's fine. This guy should be inside leverage on this route, right? So it's better leverage on that. He should be inside leverage on this, at least trying his best to play it that way, right? And this would be the only problem if you're playing outside leverage, but then that's what the hook player is for, right? So let's just pay attention to this inside guy here. Outside, and there we go, right? 
Look at this guy, inside leverage. That's hugged up right there. Now, I don't like this guy peeling off, right? You see the three receiver hook player? I don't even think he's supposed to, to do that in real life. I actually think he's supposed to take the route. Well, that, that's actually cover one robber, I think, but whatever. And we see that we're bagged up here. Now, remember, you know, you see how this guy's gotten inside leverage on this particular receiver? But that's our area here. He can't throw it, right? Well, he has nowhere to go, and then he still kind of tops the upfield shoulder, which is which is good. So everything's bagged, and he's got to get out of there, and that's just with cover one man. Okay, again. So I did everything. Divider line. Okay. You're inside, so outside shoulder. You're inside the divider line, outside shoulder. These guys inside. So my responsibility as the deep middle safety inside the numbers. And look how he plays that, man. So again... I think he ran what, like a burst corner. He's inside shoulder. And again, you have to be deadly accurate to make this throw. You you have to throw on time. I mean, you, you do something wrong and, you know, as we see, you know, we get a pick. So I should have pressed this guy here because that's the back. It's probably not good getting a free release off the ball. But that's okay. Word to the wise. When number two is off the ball like this and number one is on the ball, you know, I, I believe it's more of a it's higher prob probability that this guy's running a deeper route and this guy's running something short from what I uh, listened to yesterday. So that that's interesting as well. All right, maybe one more play. So like they was running that route. So again, divider line. I put him inside. No, I think I put him outside, I don't remember. But you notice I put him inside, right? So a lot of times you can play with this. So it kind of cuts my responsibility as a deep middle safety right so now I really I mean this guy inside now I'm really just doubling this guy to be honest I mean, this is just the way I do it I'm not saying that you have to right as we see he's the only one that really has inside leverage some type of uh, you know a nice little throw but again we know that that's our responsibility there and we see I mean he has him out leveraged on that route and I believe yeah he threw this route and Look how much space he has, right? This guy's pinning him to the sideline pretty much. Has out upfield shoulder over the top. And it's just beautiful defense. And we just pick it off. Right? So what route is that? Yeah, it's a switch route. Yep, inside. So imagine if we aligned him like outside, right? And he turns up field. Who knows how he would play it? Maybe he would play more outside shoulder on that, which would make no sense because, you know, um, the sideline is your help. You know, but he plays inside. We align him inside with the you know coverage uh, adjustment, and he just plays it perfectly. I imagine this probably wasn't his first read. Maybe this was his first three, but again, this guy was playing inside leverage and he played it, you know, perfectly. So he threw that and we got the pick. So maybe one more. Okay, yeah. Divider line. Play inside leverage. This was on the cusp, right? But I put him outside. This guy's inside. I'm not even thinking about defending this guy. 
as a deep middle safety, right? I'm not even thinking about this guy. So in actuality, I mean, this is what I'm starting to really like about this cover one stuff with the adjustments. With them out of my head, we're almost doubling this guy. Okay, now that's not to say you won't get beat on deep routes. I think this is why I included this, right? Because I'm only really into this guy, which is probably a, a mistake on my part. Um, but I know my guy is playing outside leverage, so you know I'm dealing with that route. And you see, he has inside leverage here, which is what we told him to do. I think he's running like a deep post pattern. Right here, I should have clicked off, clicked on, and this is probably a pick. So this is poor stick skills, in my opinion, because he clicks and he gets the ball. So. I'll leave it at that. I mean, you see, you know, had we have played it a lot more better with the stick, um, you know, that was actually, I, I'm okay with that, with what transpired there. Because he had, to me, superior position on that route. And we probably could have made a better play, right? So, you know, I'm just throwing that out there. Hope you guys kind of see, um, you know, where your help really is when it comes to cover one man. It all depends on that divider line, right? So you might want to, when you play cover one man, you might want to start playing inside and outside leverage based upon that line. And I believe your defense while playing those, um, that type of leverage based upon the divider line will get a lot better. So hope you enjoyed the video and uh, peace.